Hi, my name is Paul Tyler and for those of you that don't know me, I'm a photographer. I'm semi-retired now, but I still like to teach photography. My students age between 10 years old and 80 years old and in abilities from total beginner who turns up with a smartphone right through to guys and girls that would like to turn professional, so know their stuff. Today on the video, oh, you're going to ask about this, well, this is a warning to you all if you're keen photographers. This is 45 years of handling a camera up and down, up and down. You did a lot of damage to your shoulder muscles and your bones in your shoulders. I've had a bit of an operation, but it should be repaired soon and I'll be back out with my camera taking pictures again quite soon. It's a bit annoying that I can't hold the camera up and obviously cameras aren't made for left-handed people, I've discovered. Maybe that's something we should talk to Nikon and Canon about. Anyway, today's video is all about what camera to use when you've decided, and I hope you have, to try film out. And today I'll show you the two different types of camera that you can use with film, from the basic, no program, right up to the modern, almost a DSLR, except it's got film in it. Hope you enjoy. Look forward to seeing you again. So now we've discussed why it's a good idea to use a film camera. I've discussed with you what the different types of films are and the challenges you're going to meet with the exposure latitude. So I thought it'd be a good idea to talk about what sort of film camera you should buy. I mean, they're all really cheap now on eBay and in secondhand shops. So I thought I could talk about what type of camera you would choose to go out and experiment with your film. Well, if you have a look, this is the Nikon F80. As it's got an F in front of it, it's obviously a film camera. However, you'll probably recognize it. It looks very similar to the Nikon digital cameras. It has a G lens, the same as they do, with no aperture ring on it. The difference, of course, is that it doesn't have a, an LCD on the back. So you can't see what you're doing. Just to prove it is a film camera, there you are. Film goes across the back there. However, taking pictures, it's very similar to taking pictures with a digital camera. It has the matrix metering, it has the same sort of focus, um, it chooses, you can have manual focus or autofocus, it has all the same controls down here, uh, single focus, sorry, yeah, single focus or continuous focus on the front, just the same as the other Nikons do. It has a focusing light, it has the knob on the top, and it has an LCD screen here that tells you what's going on. So you have program mode, obviously shutter speed priority, aperture priority, and manual. Then you have a custom settings that you can set up custom. So if you're very used to using a digital camera and you're quite unsure of your qualifications, should we say, as to only having 36 shops available to you and having to make sure that they're all in, then this might be the way to start. Not very challenging, but at least it starts you off and it will give you a feel of using film and make you think as well, because if you've only got 36 shots, then you've got to think about it. Rather than going out with your cards in your bag, knowing that you could take 10,000 shots across the course of the day if you wanted to. So you have to think about each and every shot. You have to check your lighting and recheck your lighting. Oh, the matrix meeting in this is excellent. It works as well as the digital camera does. And you've got obviously got spot metering and center weighted, etc. But yes, so that would be a way to go. You can pick these up on eBay for under £100. Certainly uh, about $100. This beast is from 1977. It's a Nikon Nikomat. And it doesn't have any program at all. Everything is basically, it, everything is manual as it was back in those days. It does have a meter built in, 
but it's unusable because it used mercury cell batteries which are now illegal you can't buy them anywhere and if you put in the modern equivalent then it the the, the, the voltage fluctuates so it doesn't really work as well as the original battery did so the meter is all over the place this is going to make you think about your photography you set your shutter speed as you set your uh, ISO here sorry I'll get there in a minute you, you set your uh, aperture here you set your shutter speed on the side not on a knob on the top this is quite old and you set your ISO on a dial on the bottom here so you would probably need to buy a, a light meter for it because you won't know I mean be perfectly honest with you if I'm shooting black and white film I'm at the point where I can pretty much guess what the lighting is going to be and if you're doing street photography that's certainly helpful because this was with black and white film you've got this three stops latitude so you know you're going to get it in however in this modern day and age you can get apps that are light meter apps set your ISO it set your f-stop aperture and it tells you the shutter speed, or you can set your shutter speed and it will tell you what your f-stop's got to be. And it's pretty accurate. Because you, you can point it, because you've got the red square in the centre there, as you can see. So you can point it at the dark spot and point it at the bright spot and work out the, between the two, as I told you before in my previous video, and work out the ideal settings. So I can, these you can pick up for next to nothing. They really are cheap because it's a mechanical camera. The other one would be the Nikon EM. The wonderful thing about Nikon cameras, and I'll talk about this in another video, is this lens from this camera will fit onto, because it's the same bayonet mount, will fit onto the very latest Nikon digital camera. <laughs> none, of the, none of the digital things will work, of course, because they didn't know it was going to exist in those days. But the point is that the, the, the lens will fit, and a modern lens will fit onto here, although again none of the details would work because especially with a G lens because you couldn't put a G lens on because it's got no aperture ring on it so the camera wouldn't be able to set the aperture ring which would be a bit awkward anyway the point is I challenge you if you're going to do this seriously have one of each they cost next to nothing they come with lenses on a little bit more expensive with these ones obviously because the the G-series lens go on the modern um, full-frame digital cameras. But it's not DX lenses, obviously. It doesn't say FX on it, because when this was done, they didn't know they were going to have DX lenses. So, there you are. Plain and simple. You're challenged. I shall obviously be taking pictures with both these cameras, so that you can see the difference. And I'll be interested myself to find out the readings on that with matrix metering compared with the readings on my phone with my app. This is all things to be done. So we'll be learning together how that works. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, subscribe to my channel. Loads of daft stuff like this on there. And um, there's going to be more stuff about, obviously, digital and uh, film. I mean, let's just understand one thing. I love digital. I'm not against digital, but I do find that we've got to that point now where even people high up in the Royal Photographic Society enjoy taking the moon out of one picture and sticking it into another picture. And, and that's fine, I mean, that's, that's what they do and that's photography for them. But for me, it's not. For me, an image is about a pure image that I've taken. It's for me, it's not for anybody else. So if you're like me and you want to take a pure image that you haven't manipulated or played around with and you've just got it spot on in the camera and you just need to do a little bit of work on it in Lightroom and by that I don't mean um, moving things around or getting rid of backgrounds and things but by that I mean as we would have done when we were printing from slides film or from black and white in the old days a little bit of dodging and burning and a little bit of contrast control which Lightroom gives us. Photoshop is on my computer, but at the moment 
it's unused. So, subscribe, make comments below, call me names if you like, but I really enjoy my photography, I really enjoy talking to you guys, and I hope you're getting something from it.